In this lesson, I'll show you how to use the Gram-Schmidt process to get an orthonormal basis. The question reads, let the set S equal to these three vectors with the vectors defined below. The set S is a basis for R3. Use the Gram-Schmidt process to get an orthonormal basis. The first thing that you want to do is set one of these vectors equal to V1. So I'll set U1 equal to V1. So technically, V sub 1 has the components 1, 1, and 1. Next, we set V sub 2 equal to U sub 2 minus the projection of U sub 2 onto W sub 1, where W is a finite dimensional subspace of the inner product space V. Now, to find the projection of U onto W, we have to use the following formula. So this vector has the components 0, 1, and 1, minus we take the inner product of u sub 2 and v sub 1 over the norm of v sub 1, raised to the power of 2. And all of this is being multiplied to the vector v sub 1. So let's start off with the numerator. We need the inner product of u2 and v1. For that, we multiply each component, then sum that up. So 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. This part becomes 2. To find the norm of v sub 1, notice that it's being raised to the power of 2. That's important, because to find the norm of a vector, you do the following. You find the inner product, and then you raise it to the power of half. But since this is being raised to the power of 2, the 2 and the half become a 1, so we don't have to worry about that part. All we have to find is the inner product of v sub 1. Remember, v sub 1 had these components, so 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 again, plus 1. That gives us 3. So the bottom part here is 3. We have 2 over 3 times the vector v sub 1. Let me just replace that with its components. So we end up with, to find v sub 2, we have to subtract this vector with 2 over 3 times this vector. I have 0, 1, and 1 minus 2 over 3, 2 over 3, 2 over 3. 0 minus 2 over 3 is negative 2 over 3. 1 minus 2 over 3 is negative 1 over 3, and 1 minus 2 over 3 again is negative 1 over 3. That right there is v sub 2. Okay, now we have to find v sub 3. And to find v sub 3, we will be subtracting u sub 3 with the projection of u sub 3 onto w sub 2. And just to be clear, that right there represents the space spin by v sub 1 and v sub 2. So space spanned by v1 and v2. So how do we represent this mathematically? Well this part we already know is a vector and it has the components 0, 0, and 1. This part is represented as u sub 3 and v sub 1 over the norm of v sub 1 raised to the power of 2 and that's being multiplied to the vector v sub 1. Minus Remember, it's spanned by v sub 1 and v sub 2, so we'll repeat that, but with v2. So as you can tell, there's a lot of work involved here, and we'll repeat the steps that we did previously over here and over here, and it's going to take a while to do. So just to save some space, I'll just write out what you should end up with for these two expressions. So that one stays the same, and remember, we're finding vector v sub 3. We have 0, 0, and 1. Over here, we'll have 0, 0, and 1. Multiply 2, v sub 1, which was 1, 1, and 1. Over, the bottom should become 3. It's the same thing as before, remember? Where we had this part, and we wrote down 3, times the vector, which has these components. Minus, now this part is going to be new. v2, we found was this, so we'll be using this information along with u sub 3, and you should end up with the following. Okay, 
So now you have to subtract all of these together and that will end up giving you v sub 3. If you do that correctly, your vector should be 0, negative half, and positive half. To get the orthonormal basis, we divide each vector, v sub 1 through v sub 3, by its norm. So now we have to find the norm of each of these. Let me go back to this one. To find the norm of v sub 1, we will take each of these, multiply it in itself, and square root it. So we get the square root of 3 for here. For v sub 2, remember that was our answer. And the norm of this one, if we square each of these and subsequently square root, we get the square root of 2 over 3, which happens to reduce down to the square root of 6 over 3 once we rationalize. I'm not going to show that step. And if we find the norm of this vector, we end up with the square root of 2 over 2 after we rationalize. Now, as you can tell, I'm not showing you how to find the norm. It's assumed that you know how to. We do have videos dedicated to that if you still need more assistance. So I'll divide this by that expression, this vector by that expression, and this vector by the square root of 3. And we end up with three new vectors which consists of our orthonormal basis. So our orthonormal basis will be 1 over the square root of 3, 1 over the square root of 3, 1 over the square root of 3. That is associated with this part. And then when we divide each of these by the square root of 6 over 3, we'll end up with negative 2 over the square root of 6, 1 over the square root of 6, and 1 over the square root of 6, and doing the same thing here. And by the way, if you don't like the fact that we have square roots at the bottom, you can rationalize each of these components. It's the same thing. And lastly, for over here, we get 0, negative 1 over the square root of 2, and 1 over the square root of 2. Once again, you can rationalize these last two components. So this right here represents the orthonormal basis using the Gram-Schmidt process. And there you have it. That is how to use the Gram-Schmidt process to get an orthonormal basis.